JFT just fair and direct. Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week uh, March the 2nd until uh, March the 6th. I'm Haral Ambos Pissuro, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for uh, the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, um, last week was marked by a global sell-off in equity markets, as you all know, with major stock indices recording their worst week since the 2008 financial crisis. The culprit uh, was no other than the coronavirus, with its fast-spreading raising fears of another global recession. So, I expect the coronavirus to stay in the spotlight this week, but apart from that, uh, we also, uh, apart from headlines uh, with regards to the coronavirus, investors may also pay close attention to the RBA and the Bank of Canada policy meetings, as well as on the US and Canada, uh, Canadian uh, jobs reports uh, for the month of February. On Thursday, we also have an OPEC uh, meeting where uh, members are expected to discuss uh, output and decide whether they should cut production uh, further or not. But let's start with uh, a brief discussion around the equity markets and the coronavirus before we, we proceed with uh, the data on our agenda. Now, following last week's uh, tumble, which wiped out around 5 trillion US dollars from the market, most major indices rebounded somewhat during the Asian morning today. You can see that this is the weekly performance of uh, the major stock, of global major stock indices, major tumbles. This is uh, the Friday performance for Europe, the US, and Asia. You can see that during the Asian morning today we had a rebound and this may have been uh, due to expectations that central banks will respond to safeguard their economies from the damaging impact of the coronavirus. The first signal was given by Fed Chair Jerome Powell on Friday who said uh, that he and his colleagues will use their tools and, and act as appropriate to support the, their economy. Then early today Bank of Japan Governor Kuroda said that uh, the Bank of Japan will take necessary steps to stabilize markets jolted by the coronavirus, adding more fuel to speculation over a coordinated global monetary policy action. Now, as for this week's uh, data and events, let's start on Monday. Monday is a PMI day. We get the final manufacturing PMIs for February from several Eurozone nations and the Eurozone as a whole. We get the final market PMIs from the UK and the US as well. The Eurozone and the US final prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, so if this is the case, I don't expect a major market reaction, while the UK expectations are for a small downside revision to 51.8 from 51.9. Again, such a small revision uh, may not result in any major reaction to the pound. Barring any major deviations from those forecasts, investors may decide to pay more attention to the US ISM manufacturing print, which is expected to have declined to 50.4 from 50.9. Taking into account that February was marked by the effects of the fast spreading coronavirus, such a slide may not be that bad. However, a negative surprise below the boom or bust zone of 50 May raise, may raise concerns over the performance of the US economy during the month 
and may prompt investors to add to their already elevated bets with regards to further easing by the Fed. I will talk more, more on that front uh, with regards to, uh, to expectations around uh, more, more cuts by the FOMC when we will discuss Friday's employment report for February. Now, on Tuesday, tonight, during the Asian morning, the RBA decides on interest rates. At its uh, latest meeting, the bank decided to keep rates unchanged, as was widely expected, and although officials remained prepared to ease further if needed, the overall tone of the statement was uh, less dovish than anticipated. Officials noted that the bushfires and the coronavirus outbreak will weigh on domestic growth temporarily, and repeated that the long and var variable lags in the transmission of monetary policy allowed them to hold rates unchanged. Having said all that, though, the minutes of that meeting, which were released two weeks after the gathering, had a more dovish flavor, revealing that the, the board discussed the case of easing further, even at that meeting. Now, since then, the virus uh, continued uh, spreading at a fast pace, especially outside China, raising fears that it could evolve into pandemic. As far as the domestic economic releases are concerned, last week the wage price index um, year over year rate for the fourth quarter held steady at 2.2%, which combined with an uptick in inflation for the quarter resulted in a slowdown in real wages. What's more, the unemployment rate rose to 5.3 from 5.2, further distancing itself from the 4.5% threshold, which the RPA believes it would start generating inflationary pressures. Now, the cocktail of those developments prompted, prompted market participants to bring forth their expectations with regards to a 25 basis points decrease. And they now believe that such an action will be delivered at this gathering. In other words, Market expectations are for a 25 basis point interest rate cut tonight. Um, now, if the bank indeed decides to act now in order to, to treat the wounds of its economy from the effects of the coronavirus, the Aussie may come under selling pressure, especially if the cut is accompanied by a more dovish than previously language. So if they cut rates and also signal they could continue doing so, uh, this uh, may prove negative for the Aussie. Uh, according to the ISX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, we can see clearly see that a 25 base points cut is priced in for tonight. This is a March meeting. This is the current rate of the RBA, and this is the rate after a quarter point decrease. And you can see that the yields point to that decrease uh, as soon as tonight. Now, with regards to the to the data uh, during the European morning, we get Eurozone's preliminary inflation prints for February. Expectations are for the headline rate to have declined to 1.2% year over year from 1.4%, while the core rate is anticipated to have held steady at 1.1% uh, year over year. That said, with the German headline inflation uh, in German headline inflation rate staying unchanged at 1.7% we see the risks surrounding Eurozone's headline print as tilted to the upside. Now, although both rates will still be below the ECB's objective of uh, below but close to 2%, a move, in the, a move in the desired direction, at least from the headline rate, combined with uh, recent reports that Germany's finance ministry is seriously considering to boost uh, fiscal spending due to growing pressure to support uh, uh, the nation's sluggish economy may lessen the need for further additional stimulus by the ECB and thereby support the euro further. Remember that the euro surged uh, last week, um, also aided by investors are winding uh, carry trades. In other words, the euro may have been a vehicle in carry trades due to eurozone's negative interest rates. Namely, it may have been borrowed for buying other currencies like the US dollar in order to invest in risky assets like the US stocks. Now, with, with investors now unwinding massively such trades, extra low yielding currencies are getting benefited. 
Now, moving on to Wednesday. Okay, on Wednesday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada. We have Bank of Canada uh, policy decision. At its last gathering, this bank kept interest rates unchanged, but the statement had a dovish flavor, suggesting that officials have opened the door to a rate cut. They removed the part saying that it is appropriate to maintain the current level of interest rates and instead noted that in determining the future path of the bank's policy interest rate, the governing council will be watching closely to see if the recent slowdown in growth is more persistent than forecast. Now, since then, um, most data have been on the bright side with the unemployment rate ticking down to 5.5 from 5.6 and uh, inflation accelerating by more than anticipated. However, Friday's GDP data showed that the economy slowed to an annualized rate of 0.3% in, uh, in the fourth quarter from a downwardly revised 1.1% in the third quarter. So, although officials are not expected to push the cut button at this gathering, they may maintain their dovish stance and keep the door to a potential rate cut wide open, especially with oil prices tumbling due to the coronavirus disruptions uh, which uh, hit global demand. At this point, we need to say that we agree with the market consensus of uh, no cuts at this gathering. Officials may prefer to wait for data showing how the economy has been performing after the outbreak of the virus. In other words, they may wait for releases concerning uh, the month of February in order to better assess the virus's effects on the Canadian economy. Now, the risk, to, the risk to our view is a preemptive cut at this gathering following last week's, uh, last week's uh, panic and turbulence. Now, uh, apart from the Bank of Canada, on Wednesday, during the Asia, Asian session, before the Bank of Canada decision, Australia releases its GDP data for the fourth quarter with the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate expected to have held steady at uh, 0.4%, something that could drive the year-over-year -year rate up to 2% from 1.7% in quarter three. This would be a somewhat pleasant development for RBA policymakers, but we doubt that it could materially affect ex expectations with regards to their future course of action, especially if they decide to cut interest rates on Tuesday. Investors may prefer to read into data concerning the first quarter of this year as they try to assess whether and by how much did the coronavirus has affected the Australian economy, which is closely linked to the Chinese one. And uh, yeah, they may decide to do that before they adjust their bets on whether uh, further action is needed. Now, from the US, we get uh, the ADP report, employment report for February. The forecast suggests uh, that, the private, that the private sector has gained 191,000 jobs, less than January's 291,000. Uh, something like that may raise speculation that the NFPs due out on Friday may also come uh, below, their January, below their January print. Having said that, though, we repeat for the upteenth time that although the ADP is the only major gauge we have for the NFPs, it is far from a reliable predictor. The correlation between the two time series at the time of the release, meaning no, no revisions are taken into account, has fallen in recent years. So taking data from back in January 2011, you can see here the two time series, we are taking data from back from back uh, January 2011, and the correlation of uh, the two series now stands at 0 0.41, which is a low correlation print uh, for uh, for two time series that should uh, should be moving uh, together. Now, as for uh, the other data, uh, the Eurozone, the UK and the US final market services and uh, composite, composite PMIs for February are expected to confirm their initial estimates. Again, market participants may pay more attention to the ISM, to the US ISM non-manufacturing PMI, which is expected to have declined to 54.9 from 
0.5. Similar to the ISM manufacturing index, such a slide is unlikely to raise concerns with regards to the performance of the US economy, but a negative surprise below 50 uh, could most probably do so. Now on Thursday. On Thursday, the spotlight is likely to turn to the energy market as OPEC and major non-OPEC oil producing nations gather in Vienna for a two-day meeting in order to discuss output. The so-called OPEC Plus group has been already curbing output by 1.7 million uh, barrels per day, a deal that expires in the end of, uh, in the end of uh, this month. That said, lower demand due to the coronavirus has led the committee to recommend an extra, height, an extra output cut of uh, 600,000 barrels per day. However, it seems that this number was not enough for, the market, for market participants who allowed uh, crude, crude oil prices to continue tumbling. According to reports, that number is now insufficient for some of the group's members as well, one of which is Saudi Arabia. Now, sources said that those members are considering an output cut of 1 million barrels per day, a deal that should run throughout the second quarter. Now, as uh, for our view, for oil prices to rebound, producers may need to deliver something above and beyond that. We base that view on the fact that oil prices ignored the aforementioned reports and continued to slide steadily last week. Thus, anything between 600k and 1 million barrels per day is unlikely to alter uh, uh, that course. Now, in case the number is uh, below 600k, or in the extreme case of uh, no new cuts, oil prices are likely to tumble instantly, accelerating their uh, prevailing downtrend. Now, apart from uh, the OPEC uh, plus gathering, the only other worth mentioning release is Australia's trade balance for January, which is due to be out during the Asian session. Expectations are, are for the nation surplus to have narrowed to 4.8 billion Australian dollars from 5.2 uh, uh, billion in, in December. Now on Friday, on Friday, the main event is likely to be the U.S. employment report for February. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have increased 178,000, less than January's 225,000, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked back down to its 50-year low of 3.5%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have accelerated to 0.3% month over month from 0.3%. 2%, something that barring any deviations uh, to the prior monthly prints, uh, will drive the year-over-year -year rate up to 3.2% from 3.1%. Now, overall, the forecasts uh, point to a decent report consistent with uh, further tightening uh, in the U.S. labor market. However, we don't expect this report to eliminate expectations with regards to a rate cut by the Fed in the months to come. At its uh, latest meeting, the committee noted that it will not tolerate inflation persistently below the 2% target, but Fed Chief Powell, even when testifying uh, before Congress, noted that the current level of interest rates remain appropriate. Under normal cir circumstances, accelerating wages would have raised speculation of higher inflation in the months to come and thereby allow Fed officials to, say, to stay sidelined for more. However, Fears of, uh, over the coronavirus' effects on the U.S. economy have prompted market participants to drastically increase bets with regards to a rate cut as soon as at the upcoming gathering. According to the Fed Fund Futures, they consider, they consider a 25 basis points cut to be a done deal. Even Fed Chair Powell released a statement on Friday saying that although the fundamentals of the U.S. economy remain strong, the, cor the coronavirus poses evolving risks and that the committee will use its tools and act as appropriate to support the economy. Now, this, increase, uh, this increased uh, cut bets even further with uh, participants now assigning a 95% chance over a 50 basis points cut uh, when the Fed uh, meets next. Here I have the yields of the Fed Fund Futures. You can see that a 25 basis points decrease is fully priced in for this month. 
current rate, one cut and two cuts. But you can also see that in April, uh, interest rates are expected to be even lower, which supports the fact that we have a huge probability of a 50 uh, basis point cuts at uh, the FOMC's uh, next gathering. So the big question uh, when we, uh, we get closer to that, to that meeting is whether they will cut by 25 basis points or whether they will cut by 50 basis points. Now, uh, so with regards to the US employment report, given those uh, elevated expectations over uh, a, a, a rate cut by the Fed, I believe that this time around a strong employment report may not prove that it determinant with regards to the Fed's future course of action. It could just drive the percentage of a double cut slightly lower. Uh, on Friday, we get employment data from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is expected to have ticked back up to 5.6% from 5.5%, while the net change in employment is anticipated to show that the economy gained less jobs than it did in January. Specifically, it is expected to show an increase of uh, 10K jobs, less than the prior print of 34.5K. Now, conditional upon Bank of Canada officials maintaining their dovish stance on Wednesday and not cutting rates, a soft employment report is likely to keep the chances of a rate cut in the not too distant future elevated. Now on Saturday, uh, on Saturday, China's trade balance for February is coming out. Both exports and imports are expected to have slumped 8.4% year over year and 9% and 9 year over year respectively after rising 7.9% and 16.5% in January. This may result in a shrinking uh, trade surplus of uh, 12.75 billion uh, US dollars from uh, 47.21 billion dollars. The outbreak of the coronavirus started in China, the authorities of which have adopted restrictive measures in their attempt to contain the virus, something that is expected to have hurt businesses and thereby exports and imports. Now, even if we see larges, uh, larger, larger slides than the forecast suggests, uh, this will not come as a surprise to us. In any case, uh, bigger declines may increase concerns that uh, the virus's economic effects are larger than previously anticipated and may result in another round of risk aversion uh, next week. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. Do we have any questions with regards to this week's events or over the coronavirus? So we don't have any questions. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. Now, if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye everyone and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.